We're going to start talking about the uh, SA80 biology. The course will be on the following chapters. Firstly, we're going to talk about biology introduction to biology. Right after, we will talk about the classification, one of the biggest chapters. Tricky for the most, have a lot of memorization, a lot of terminologies. That's why you need to exert much more effort in order to be familiar with it. Okay? Classification, I break it down into bacteria and viruses, then protists and fungi. Then I'm gonna talk about animal kingdom, and I split it into the vertebrates and invertebrates. Okay? Then I will talk about the plants, I'll talk about human systems, cell, genetics, ecology, and biodiversity, okay? The easiest chapter, in order to just give you a, a, a full outline, the easiest chapters are the introduction to biology, it's not that hard, you took it since grade nine, okay? The uh, ecology is not that hard, biodiversity also. The cell, you may know a lot, and it's connected to the introduction to biology as well, okay? The heaviest chapters are human systems. More than 100 of the classified questions, you're gonna find them there. So you have to exert a lot of efforts in this chapter especially, because many questions will be from there, okay? Plans come in the second, then the classification, a bulky thing, okay? Then we're gonna talk about genetics, inheritance, and genes. You are familiar with it, even this year in the beginning of the first term, even last year at the end of the year, okay, chromosomes and such those issues, okay? So, let's get started. Yeah, introduction to biology. Firstly, what is the meaning of biology? As you know, biology is the study of all of the forms of life. That's why it may be referred to as the life science. Life science, okay? Cell is the unit of the structure and function. The unit of the structure and function in all of the living things, okay? Living organisms may be unicellular or multicellular. They may be unicellular or multicellular, okay? Made up of only one cell, that's why unicellular or multicellular, they're made up of more than one cell, okay? Of course, all organisms share common characteristics. Mrs. Gren, Mrs. Gren, those that attend grade 9 BR, they may listen to this there. Mrs. Gren, okay? We have the movement, respiration, sensitivity, okay? Then we have the growth, reproduction, excretion, and nutrition. Those are the most common features that all of the living organisms share in common, okay? Adaptation is, you took this evening in grade eight, if you remember, chapter number three, chick one, sign three, okay? Yeah, adaptations are a special features that, huh, that help the living organism to survive, to live in the environment, to overcome the change to accommodate, to adapt, to withstand any change. Okay? This is the adaptation. Yeah. Hypothesis is a scientific illustration that can be tested. Okay. The ISU, I know that you are familiar with it. Okay? Surely you took it in physics. Yeah? This is the international system of units. The metric system, for example. Okay? It's the modern form of the metric system. You know the metric system? Okay, the distances will be by kilometers. Okay, the um, time will be by uh, seconds. Okay, also the, huh? the uh, uh, mass will be by kilograms or grams and so on. Okay, independent, dependent. This is very tricky since grade seven, I know that. Bore in mind, those very important words. It's gonna help you in the physics and chemistry as well. Any experiment in the world, 
an experiment in the world, there is or there are three huh, variables. There are three variables. There, are, there is independent variable, okay, dependent variable, and a lot of other variables that should be maintained constant, should be kept constant, okay? The independent variable, by only one word, it's the, huh, the changed, the, the changed variable, okay? The dependent variable is the measured, is the, the measured variable, okay? And the rest of the variables should be maintained constant, should be kept constant throughout the experiment. Example, the effect of temperature on the activity of enzyme lactase. Okay, so the independent variable is the, huh? what is the changing variable here? The temperature, okay. And what is the dependent variable? The activity of the enzyme. The rest of the variables that should be maintained and kept constant huh, are the, huh, the, the controls should be kept, should be maintained constant, should be maintained constant, okay? Such like the pH, you may say this, okay? Such like the concentration, okay? The volume, yeah, temperature here, is it changed? So it's the independent variable, okay? So the independent, the factor that is being tested, the change, in just one word, one simple word, the changed variable. The dependent variable is the measure, the one that we measure, okay? That it changed as per any change occurred in the independent variable, okay? Okay, now, a very quick difference between the animal and plant cell, okay? The nucleus mostly in the animal cell, I'm so, yeah? I'm sorry, in the plant cell, it's lateral. Ah. While in the animal cell, I'm sorry, in the plant cell, it's in the center, yeah. Okay, here the uh, chloroplast, they are present in the plant, while they are absent in the, yes, in the animal. The vacuole is huh, very big in the, in the plant, but they are very small and scattered in case of the animal. Yes, very small food vacuoles, okay? And, yes? Yes? Opposite? I'm sorry. So what is the, what is the first thing? The point of comparison? Uh, so not that clear. Uh, yeah. So you, you convert it, yeah. Okay, no problem. Yeah, if it's if it's not yeah, convert it in the nodes. Animal cell, lateral. Yes, central. Okay. What is the first what is the first point of comparison? Yeah. Okay. Now we're going to talk about the ultrastructure of the cell. Ultrastructure of the cell. Firstly, we're going to talk about the structure of the. Uh, this is the cell wall. The cell wall. It's probably written there. Okay. It's made up of cellulose, which is a kind of polysaccharide. Polymer of mono and di saccharides, which forms a strong support, making a strong support to the plant cell and protects its shape. It limits and gives the plant cell its fixed shape. Okay? It's uh, fully permeable, fully permeable, unlike the plasma membrane, which is partially permeable. Partially permeable. The cell wall is fully permeable. It prevents the bursting of the plant cell. If the cell wall or the plant becomes turgid, the cell wall play a role against the bursting of the plant cell. Okay? And also absorb water by, it's fully, fully permeable. Okay? 
Okay. Now we're gonna talk about the centrioles. They are organelles found in form of pairs and play a role in the cell division. Okay? In the cell division, this pair, one of them, or each one of them, will go to the pools of the cell in order to ha huh, in order to pull pull the chromosomes prior to the cell division. Okay? Okay. The chloroplasts, chloro means color. Chloro means color. This color is came from the pigment. This pigment is chlorophyll. This pigment is chlorophyll. They contain the green pigment or chlorophyll, which absorbs, traps, captures the solar energy of the sun. Okay, then converted into chemical energy, which is the glucose, by the process of photosynthesis. Okay, they usually contain stored starch that is being made by the process of photosynthesis. This is the chloroplast. Okay, cilia is considered from the huh, cytoskeleton. It's, it may be even yeah, protractions from the cell surfaces that play a role in the movement. They may be also trapping the, uh, the breeze in order to be eaten. So they are playing a role in the feeding process and attract the substance towards the cell surface. Such like those that I found in the paramecium. Okay. The flagella are protrusions also that help in the movement. Okay? They swipe in them so they are propelling themselves so they can move. Such like Euglena, for example. Okay? The cytoskeleton. Cyto means cell. Skeleton is the? Huh? The structure, yeah. So, it's a network in the cell that found inside the cytoplasm. That's found inside the cytoplasm. Yeah, microtubules and, huh? Microtubules and filaments. So support and shape give the cell its, huh? its shape, anchoring the organelles inside the cell. Help the position and transport of organelles and even strength and assist in the cell division and help in the movement, help in the movement as well. <coughs> yes, now we're gonna talk about very important organelle, which is the endoplasmic reticulum. Endo means inside, plasmic inside the, huh? The plasma or the cytoplasm. Reticulum is, huh? A net, a network. So, it's long folded membranes that help in the formation of protein. Why do they make a rule in the production of protein? Because they may be huh, rough, rough due to the presence of ribosomes. Due to the presence of ribosomes. Ribosomes are responsible for the protein synthesis. Responsible for the protein synthesis. And if there is no combine ribosome with the endoplasmic reticulum, it will be referred to as smooth. It may be referred to as smooth endoplasmic reticulum. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum play any role? Anyone knows? It may play any role? Huh? Yes or no? Yeah, what is this rule? Yes, what is this rule? Who can tell? Yeah, the store of fat and calcium, yes. <laughs> now we're going to talk about the Golgi apparatus. Golgi apparatus. It's a tubular flattened membranes that backing modifying protein to be shipped outside of the cell or even inside the cell. But mostly if the cell is excretory, those secretions will be shipped outside. Very simple. What will be shipped? The modified proteins. What are the, um, the main regions that proteins are made? 
huh? the rough endoblasmic reticulum, R-E-R, rough endoblasmic reticulum. When the protein made that, it will be shuttled, it will be shuttled in vesicles to the Golgi apparatus. Golgi will receive them. Golgi will receive the protein. After this, it will modify. It will modify this protein. Okay? Packaging them and huh, shipping them. Okay? To the cell surface membrane, then they will be excreted. Okay? So it play a role in the modification of the synthesized cellular proteins. Yeah. Lysosome. Lysosome. Lyso come from the wall lytic, which means breaking down. Breaking down. Zone means body. Lysosome, huh? The body that will break down. What will break it down? Or what are things that will be broken down by the lysosome? Uh, any, any foreign body that may be taken by the cell, okay? Also, may break down any worn out cellular organ that becomes aged in order to be recycled, okay? For example, vesicle containing digestive enzymes that lysis break down the excess cellular material or any trapped by huh, penis cytosis or by phagocytosis, okay? Now we're gonna talk about the bower houses, which are the mitochondria, yes. They are the site of aerobic respiration. They are the site of aerobic respiration. And energy release, of course. Okay? The more active the cell, the more mitochondria you're gonna find there. The more active the cell, the more mitochondria you're gonna find there. Okay? So the more, yeah. It's the site of production of energy by the process of aerobic respiration. Okay? Now we're gonna talk about the CPU of the cell, the central processing unit, okay? Which is the? Huh? It's the nucleus. It's the nucleus. It contains the chromosomes that are made up of DNA, okay? Deoxyribonucleic acid, which are inherited from one organism, okay, to their parents. So the nucleus contains the chromosomes that are made up of DNA, okay, that inherited from the parent to their offspring, okay. The chromosomes contain the information, the data, the instructions, okay, which control the cell activities and help cell to make the right sort of protein that are determining the traits. Those are considered the genotype that control the phenotype. We're going to talk about this in details in the chapter of genetics. Okay? Then you have the plasma membrane, the cell surface membrane. It's limiting the cell and surround all of the components of the cell, retain the cell contents. Okay? So all of the organelles, all of the Organelles, the mitochondria, the Golgi apparatus, the nucleus, okay, are being kept inside the cell due to the presence of the huh, cell surface membrane or the plasma membrane. It's made up of phospholipid bilayer. Phospholipid bilayer. Phospholipid is going to make the heads and the tails are from the lipid. That's why it's known as phospholipid bilayer. Bilayer because there are, this is the first layer, okay, and opposite to it, there is the second layer. It's being complicated by, or there, there is protein embedded in the phospholipid bilayer. This protein may be surface protein, or known as peripheral protein, or it may be huh, penetrating from out in the middle and inside the cell, which would be known as Huh? Huh? What, what will named? Integral protein. Integral protein. Yes. So, it's partially permeable. This is one of the most important things. It has the ability to determine, to detect, to decide what to get in and what should not be get in. So, 
It may be referred to as, in the textbook, as selective permeability. Selective permeability. It may be referred to as partially permeable. Partially permeable. Or selectively permeable. So, allows the small molecules and prevent the larger molecule to get into the cell. The cell membrane is like a fluid mosaic. Fluid mosaic. What is the meaning of it? It means that it has a fluidity property. Yeah. It has a fluidity property. What makes or what determines the ratio of this fluidity? The presence of cholesterol. The presence of cholesterol. Okay? And the transport of proteins help also the cells that are found on the cell surface protein. Those receptors may receive any legend, any signal from another cell in order to communicate between the cells. Okay? In order to better respond. Okay? Okay, the plasma membrane also, one of the most important things that the cholesterol and the transporter protein, as we mentioned, play the cholesterol, the cholesterol play a role to control the ratio of fluidity, while the uh, receptors play a role in the uh, combination to any legend, any uh, signal, in order to provide a proper response to it. Okay. Also, it controls the movement in and out of the cell, in and out of the cell, because it's selectively permeable. It can determine which to get in and which should not be given. Ribosomes, they look like tiny dots, okay, which are either attached to a network, which is the endoplasmic reticulum, and in this case, the endoplasmic reticulum will be referred to as rough endoplasmic reticulum. Due to the combination of the Huh? Yeah, because the ribosomes are attached to the surfaces, such like a beads on a smooth surface. Okay, that's why it's no longer smooth, it's rough. Okay, or ribosomes may be free in the cytoplasm, may be free in the cytoplasm. Okay, they are the place where the proteins are made. If you remember last year, chapter number eight was talking about the protein synthesis, which is the, th the third pillar or the third dogma of the molecular biology. If you remember last year, I mentioned we have number one, the, what are the, huh, the dogma of the molecular biology? There are three. Who can remind me? There are three. Number one, no, no. Number one was DNA replication. DNA replication. Number two was? Huh? RNA transcription. RNA transcription. Yes. Number three was? Gene expression, gene expression, or the protein synthesis, which is being done by the ribosome. Yeah, perfect. Ribosomes join amino acid together, okay, in a specific sequence, okay, in order to make a particular protein. This done according to the instruction that is being written on the transcription or the mRNA, the messenger. RNA, okay? 
there are the anti-codon that will be read by the ribosomes and based on this, the specific amino acids will be uh, brought from the cytoplasm and joined together to make particular specific protein based on these instructions, okay? Now we're gonna talk about the vacuole. This is the last thing we're gonna talk about, okay? Here in, the, in this part. Plants will have large sap vacuole, cell sap vacuole, okay? Which is a space surrounded by a membrane and contains solutions, sugar, and many other substances. It's very huge in the plant cell. It's resident in the center, okay? Animal cells have very small vacuoles which contain food, water. What is the purpose of it? It regulates, okay, the absorption of water, it, which is known as osmoregulation. Osmoregulation. One second, please. And also it may contain stored food. Okay. Okay, the animal cell, if we make a summarization, we're gonna find out that from outside to inside, we will find the huh, cell surface membrane or the plasma membrane. Then we will find the cytoplasm. In the center, we're gonna find the nucleus. Yeah, I did not mention that. The nucleus is made up of outer membrane, which is known as a nuclear envelope. A nuclear envelope, okay? Yes. Then there is pores or uh, openings through which the substances are coming in and out, go in and out from the nucleus to the cytoplasm and vice versa. Okay. In the center there is the nucle uh, nucleus. There is the nucleus. Okay. And also there is the nucleo uh, or nuclear sub. Nuclear sub. Sub means. Yeah, liquid, <laughs> liquid form. This is the nucleus. Yeah, connected to it, there is the endoplasmic reticulum. Endoplasmic reticulum. After the endoplasmic reticulum, there is Golgi apparatus, okay? Then we have the bar houses or the mitochondria. Then we have ribosomes, lysosomes, centrioles, and the rest of it. This is the animal cell. Now we are talking about the plant cell, okay, that also has a cell surface membrane, but from outside, as we mentioned, it has a huh, cell wall. It has cell wall, okay. Also there is the nucleus with the same component as we mentioned in the animal cell. It has a very large sap vacuum or cell sap vacuum. Okay, also it has mitochondria, it has huh, the Golgi apparatus, it has what else? All of the rest okay, of the components. It doesn't have the uh, centrioles and it has one of the most distinguished things, unique things, which is the chloroplast. Perfect, perfect. What? The chloroplast. Yeah. If we make a comparison, if we make a comparison, all of those are found in each. All of those are found on each. Only those are the differences. What are the differences? Yeah. All, all of those are the same in both animal and plant cell. But for example, plant cell contain chloroplast, which animal cell huh? doesn't, do not have. It has a central animal cell, do not have. The cell wall, which is absent in the, and the, it's absent in the animal cell. There is no, there is no, yeah, there is no cell wall. Yes, thank you, thank you. There is no cell wall. Huh? Yeah, vacuole, small vacuoles are, but central absent. Yeah, the animal cell, they have lysosome, they have centrioles. Those are absent in case of plant cell. They are absent in the plant cell. Comparison between typical animal and plant cell, the similarities, we're gonna find that both have cell membrane, cytoplasm, nucleus, mitochondria, okay, as we mentioned before. Differences, 
the cell wall only in the plant cell, okay? The chloroplast only in the plant cell, the vacuole only in the plant cell, the uh, lysosome and centrioles only found in the animal cell. Yes. So we will stop here till pray and come again. <laughs>